A while ago, I asked people to submit some silly science beliefs or opinions that they held, which turned out to be totally wrong. Well, you didn't disappoint and 192 of you sent something in. Today we take a look at some of the best. This is Silly Science Beliefs. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tim for Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, back to today's video, which as I said, is something slightly different today, as we look at some of your secret science confessions. Now, please bear in mind that all of these are anonymous, so there'll be no names read out whatsoever. And of course, I've put this as a Tim for Tuesday video because some of these silly science beliefs uh, could be thought of as tinfoil beliefs. Also, if I don't use yours, I apologise. There probably will be enough for a volume two. And of course, there are also quite a few repeats. So without further ado, let's begin. My parents raised me, believing if I said pardon me after farting, then the fart wouldn't smell. My backside has proved it wrong a million times, but as a result, I still say pardon me after a fart, even when I'm on my own. There's nothing wrong with a bit of politeness after passing wind. But of course, said politeness has no effect on the smell, unfortunately. I thought that male alligators were crocodiles and female alligators were alligators. Nothing to be ashamed of here, unless of course you were an adult believing this. But this is actually quite common, and you'll be surprised at the amount of entries I had where people believed that cats were females and dogs were males. Now, even though this cat looks female, he definitely is male, aren't you Zeus? I used to believe that the Parasaurolophus dinosaur could breathe fire due to being raised young earth creationist and believing dragons were dinosaurs. Yes, an unfortunate side effect of being raised a young earth creationist is the stories that you believe actually happened. Interesting that you believed it was only this particular dinosaur that could do that. Now, Jurassic Park, as good as it was, would have been a much more interesting film if this was the case. I honestly thought that the moon only ever came out at night. I also believed, as a child, that the moon was humanity's original home and the craters were bomb blasts from a great war that destroyed it, leaving us no choice but to fly to our current home. Now, as a child, this is probably quite a common one, until you see the moon during daytime, of course. And the other thing is an interesting one, quite at home in the world of science fiction. Of course, at the moment, totally inconceivable that we can fly an entire race from one planetary body to another. When I was young, I used to believe that faeces wasn't leftover waste from food, but the end of your intestines rotting and falling off. I thought that when you ate, the food was processed and added to the start of the intestines, and every time this happened, the whole organ would shift along and a bit at the end would fall off. Pretty sure I believe this solely because I saw a drawing of human anatomy that had the intestines coloured in brown. A pretty disgusting, if not logical, belief there. And one in which I must admit, I laughed out loud at when I first read it. Interesting the effect that one diagram can have on you, when you're young, isn't it? I used to think that women just spontaneously got pregnant, like blam, there's a fetus. Blam is an interesting choice of word there, and it's a bloody good job that's not how it happens as well. Overpopulation would be even more of a serious problem than it is now. When I was younger, I used to think everyone experienced the same weather. If it was raining for me, it was raining for the whole world. If it was sunny for me, it was sunny for the whole world. I was like nine or 10, lol. Not a totally inconceivable thing to believe at that age, especially when you weren't aware of the wider world. Now my 10 year old is at the other end of this extreme here. He can actually list every single country in the world. I thought clouds were made from people breathing out because I could see my breath sometimes and it looked like clouds. Now this sounds like the start of a scientific discovery as a kid. You were making an observation and as it turns out that observation is not that far from the truth. And when you breathe out in cold weather you're seeing tiny droplets of moisture that form your breath. Not unlike a cloud at all. Maybe not science related, I don't know. I do not believe we are in the 21st century, but the 20th century. My reasoning is that 21st indicates that 2,100 years on the calendar has passed, which hasn't happened yet. The few people that had tried to argue this with me haven't been able to change my viewpoint. Maybe you can. Love your videos. Maybe I can. You see, the first century is zero to 99 years, isn't it? That means that the second century starts at the year 100, doesn't it? and so on. It's a little bit like football. If you score in the first minute, that first minute is between zero and 59 seconds. There isn't actually a one minute at the front of the time. I hope that helps. I used to believe that magnetism was being perpetrated by small fast ants. 
Let me explain. When I was four, I was in the possession of two small magnets and played with them extensively. Now, of course, I didn't understand magnetism at the time, but my high functioning autistic brain did try to come up with theories about what I was observing. I couldn't see anything pulling the magnets together from above or below them. I also put the magnets on some things and they would stick to them, but other times they wouldn't and or would be repelled. My theory was for about three or four years that ants, the smallest thing I knew that moved, must have been the culprit. I would see them a lot of the time outside, so it's not like they weren't around, but the question rose up about why I couldn't see them pulling the magnets. Younger me reasoned they must be too fast to see, like if you were to wave your arm quickly around it could seem to disappear momentarily. Now, as a little kid, this made perfect sense. I'm not sure why I didn't question the motive of the ants, but it is what it is. I never even really told anyone else about it. When I was actually taught about magnetism, I was certainly blown away. At the very least, I didn't share my theory with other kids, or they would have certainly laughed at me. Now, it sounds to me like we had a budding scientist in our midst here. You were asking and answering questions, something which very good scientists do. You just missed the next step, which was experimentation. I think if you'd done that, you'd have come a bit further with your theories. I was a flat earther. I had a nervous breakdown in 2012 after watching my dad die slowly of cancer. Got wrapped up in a lot of conspiracy theories and other mumbo jumbo, Illuminati, New World Order, anti-Semitic stuff, and then Flat Earth. I'm very ashamed of that six, seven year period of my life, but lucky that my wife didn't give up on me. She helped pull me through it, and so did people like you, Simon. Thanks. This. This right here is why I do what I do. So when I see comments on the channel asking me why do I bother with this, I'll refer them back to this comment. I know I'm not alone because I've heard this before from other people, but when I learned that the sun would eventually burn out, I had a bit of an existential crisis because I didn't understand the vast amount of time that had to pass before it happened. Now I think we've all been there when we've discovered this one, my friend. Of course, it'll be well over five billion years before we have to worry about that. We'll be worm food by then. When I was little, I used to believe that we lived inside the Earth. I didn't realise that we were on the surface, so I thought that spacecraft had to enter the Earth. Realising that they enter the Earth's atmosphere, but not the Earth itself, and that the Earth had a core and other layers inside it where we do not live was mind-blowing to me. Ah, I like this one. And another potential work of science fiction. Lovely stuff. I wouldn't smile around caterpillars. My oldest brother told me that if they counted your teeth, you would die. When I was like four or five. I bet I was 10 before I figured out how ridiculous it was to believe that. Yes, I believe the notion that caterpillars can count is the one here, isn't it? Very funny. Elder siblings are awful, aren't they? I should know. I'm one. I believe that electricity is similar to water. Someone somewhere fills wires with it so we can use it. Also, I believe that sun is a ball of burning wood. And then I went to university to study physics. Oof, bagsy me not being the guy filling the wires of electricity. And I think you'll believe that the sun is a big ball of burning wood is actually quite a common belief. The varying distance to the sun throughout the year causes the seasons. I obviously misremembered what I was taught in school, just like flat earthers, but flat earthers won't admit they remembered wrong. Yes, this sounds very much like what a flat earther would say, isn't it? And ironically, it's actually closer to the sun during the northern hemisphere winter. I used to buy into a lot of new age conspiracies, started with alien abductions and spiraled off into some absurd realms of belief. The silliest was Matrix Energetics, which was a magical healing technique where you would place one hand on an injury slash pain and place your other hand on a non-injured part of the body. And through concentration and a sort of letting go into the flow, you were supposed to somehow use quantum entanglement and or uncertainty principle to somehow quantumly transform the pain slash injury into non-pain slash non-injury. Absolute nonsense. And in retrospect, the books about it were complete word salad. Yes, I think the ability to wield quantum entanglement is nonsensical. But let's not forget it was used to perfection by Mr. Miyagi in Karate Kid. Well, that will do for today. I do hope you enjoyed it. I do have a few more, so we'll do a second volume next month. But as I said, something different for this week. I hope you liked it. But for now, we're all done and done for a, we're all done and done. No, we're not. We're all done and dusted for another episode of Tim Ford Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, as I said, it's truly appreciated. If you enjoyed this one, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Less than 20,000 to go now before we hit that half a million uh, milestone of subscribers. And of course, if you really enjoyed it, hit that like button too. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week. And I'll see you Friday for the return of a challenge, a flat earth challenge from Santos Bonucci himself. See you then.